Cool. So we're going to go ahead and just start with creating some strategies within TraderFlows and get them connected to our paper brokers. So everything within TraderFlows is based around this concept of a webhook. And a webhook is a way for applications to communicate information between each other. So if you are familiar with custom coding or using TradingView or TrendSpider, they all have the ability to send data to a webhook. And in TradingView, you can set up a strategy. You can say, I want to create an alert that sends when XYZ is true. And when that alert triggers, I want to send that alert to this webhook URL. So the first thing you have to do is create a webhook. So we'll just create a stocks webhook. And we'll associate, we'll allow the square ticker. Um, if you don't want to restrict it to any ticker, you can check allow any ticker. I personally prefer to restrict it to the specific tickers that I want to trade. It does require more updating. So if I you know, wanted to set up a new alert for Tesla, I would have to go in and edit my webhook and allow Tesla here. Otherwise, um, it would not allow any requests to be sent to that webhook. So you can also limit the webhook so that only TradingView or TrendSpider or specific IP addresses have the ability to send signals to that webhook. So let's go ahead and save that webhook. Um, and let me show you, um, actually, I'll, I'll come back to that later. I'll show you something in a second. So the next thing, uh, once you have the webhook created is you need to create a strategy. And let's just call this the stock strategy. And let's associate it to that stocks webhook that we created previously. And some of this other information, we're just going to leave blank, but say it was um, a published public strategy on TraderFlow. So you could show the URL to that strategy on TradingView, who the author is, the URL to that author's profile on TradingView, and what the recommended account size is. For example, if it's a strategy that could potentially trigger uh, multiple signals within one trading day, you're going to want at least at least $25,000, probably more like $30,000 so that you have a little bit of buffer. Um, if you don't have a $25,000 account, you could be at risk of uh, triggering the pattern day trading rule and then getting your account um, restricted so that you can only sell uh, and you can no longer buy. And I think some brokers are different, but most of them will, will put your account on a 90 day sell only restriction. So then these settings here, subscription defaults, these are the default settings for the strategy that get used whenever someone subscribes to the strategy. So we're just gonna put some sane defaults in here so that when we create a subscription to this strategy and connect it to our broker, it'll default these settings. So we want to take both sides, both bullish and bearish. So we're going to choose both. We're going to default the tickers to square. We want it to buy stocks. We'll show how, how to set up options and future strategies later. Um, but, but this strategy is a stock strategy. So choose stocks in the asset class. And all these values can be left blank. Those are only for if you choose the options asset class. And then in the position size, um, let's default this to 10% of our portfolio value. And I'll show you what that looks like once we subscribe to the strategy. And let's do entry market and exit market. All right, now that this strategy is created, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is create a subscription to that strategy and connect it connect the strategy to a broker that you've connected to Traders Post. So just go ahead and click create subscription. And this is a stock strategy. So let's connect it to the Traders Post paper broker. Click confirm. So you'll see now that we have this a subscription created and it's populated with the defaults that we created or that we set in the strategy subscription defaults. So you see sides is both, it defaulted to square, it selected the broker that we selected on the previous screen, it chose stocks as the asset class, and it's doing 10% of the portfolio value, and it is doing an entry market and exit market. 
All right, so let's save that strategy subscription. And you see here that at the top right, this is basically like a preview of what the configuration would produce if you were to get a signal to that strategy. So if we got a signal for Square right now at the current market price, it would buy 97 shares. The market price is $102.52. So basically because this is a $100,000 paper broker and we configured 10% of the portfolio value, that means that we're allowed to spend $10,000 per position and given that the price is $102.52, that means that we can buy 97 shares, which totals almost $10,000. All right, so we have this subscription all set up now. The last thing um, that I'll show you here is you can click the bullish example or the bearish example. Because we have sides both chosen, that's why this bearish example shows up. So you can see, if we were to get a bearish signal, and if it stocks, if we were to get a sell signal, we're gonna, the entry order is going to be a sell short. And if we were to get a buy signal, which is a bullish signal, we're gonna exit the short position, which is gonna be a buy to cover order. All right, so now let's enable this strategy subscription. All right, now it's enabled. And now let's trigger a test signal to that webhook so that we can see what it looks like. So if you go to strategies, click webhooks, click view, and then click send request at the top right, this will basically allow us to manually send a signal to that webhook. And this is useful because you know, strategies may only trigger one signal a day or maybe two or three signals a day. And you don't wanna to have to sit around all day waiting for your strategy to actually trigger a signal to make sure that everything is configured correctly. So just go ahead and click send request and let's send a buy order, but let's actually change it to a ticker that we don't support. So we'll click send. And you see how it says ticker is not allowed on this webhook. That's because in the webhook configuration, we're only allowing the square ticker. So another thing that's really useful is the logs button right here. This basically shows you a raw uh, list of all of the requests, both successful ones and failed requests that get sent to that webhook. So this is the webhook request that we just triggered via the send request button, and you can see that it failed. So now let's send a request to the webhook, but let's send one that it will accept. So we're gonna do a buy for square. So let's go ahead and uncheck the test button. And the reason why we're gonna uncheck test is because we actually want this webhook to trigger all of the strategies and the strategy subscriptions that are associated to that webhook. So let's go ahead and click send. And you'll see that we got a trade triggered, but it's queued. And the reason why that is, is because the market's closed. So when the market is closed, it'll basically queue that trade to be sent to the broker at the next market open. So what we can do though is, um, because it's uh, extended hours right now, um, what we could do is let's unqueue this trade. This basically removes it from the queue so that it won't be sent to the, the broker at, at the next market open. So tomorrow morning at, at 8.30 when the market opens, it'll dequeue that trade and immediately send it to the broker. But we're going to unqueue it. So now this uh, trade is in a new status and you basically have to approve or reject the trade at this point. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to edit the trade. And what this does is you can edit the settings for just this trade. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this to allow entry extended hours. And let's see, we're going to do bullish only. So now that we've 
unchecked entry market and exit market, and we checked allow entry extended hours, when we save this, this is gonna submit a limit order instead of a market order. And it will be good until canceled plus extended hours. So now that we've done that, we can actually go back and approve this trade and it'll send it to the broker because it's allowing extended hours and after hours is still active right now. So let's go ahead and click approve. And you see that the, the order was filled, it was sent to the broker, and now we have entered a bullish position on Square. This section right here called broker logs is basically all of the API calls that we made to the broker uh, when executing that trade. So in this example, we were only entering a new position. So there's only one uh, API call here to basically create an order. So if we click that, you'll see that this is the data that it sent to the broker to buy 97 shares. It was a, a limit order. It was a buy order. Um, and the limit price was 102455. And then the response is the response from the broker. And you see that the response was status filled. Uh, we can see what the price was filled at. So that's just useful for kind of like debugging the information and, and what was sent to the broker. All right, so let's go back to the trade here. And what we're gonna do is now, I'm gonna edit the subscription, the strategy subscription, and I'm gonna change the settings now to be bullish only. I'm going to disable auto submit and I'm going to uncheck entry market, uncheck exit market and allow entry extended hours and allow exit extended hours. So now you see even the exit order is also good until canceled plus extended hours. If you expand the, the order row, you can see extended hours is yes. Same thing for the entry, extended hours is set to yes. So now let's go back to the webhook and let's send a request and let's, let's send a sell signal. So we have an open long position. So we're gonna sell that long position. And because I disabled auto submit, when we click that trade, you'll see that it hasn't been submitted to the broker yet because again, if I, you can click the edit subscription button to go back to the subscription configuration, auto submit was disabled. So we'll go back to that, that pending trade and we'll click approve. Actually, before I do that, just to review this. So this is an exit order and we're selling to close basically that long position. We'll click approve. And now that position has been exited. All right, so the other thing that I haven't showed is this little red icon up here. This is basically like your trade inbox. Every time you get a new trade, it'll show up here. Um, you can click to view the trade, you can click mark red, All right, so we're done with all these trades. If you wanna click this button up at the top, that'll mark all of the trades as red. All right, um, so a few other things that I'll show you. If you go to the broker UI, um, there's a trades button at the top right. This basically shows you all the trades that are associated to that broker. You can also go to the subscriptions and click the trades button. That'll show you all of the trades that are associated to that strategy subscription. Let's send one more webhook, um, except let's turn on auto submit again. Let's go back to the webhook and we'll send a request. And the trade is complete. It was auto submitted to the broker. And now if we go back to that paper broker, you'll see that we have an open position now for Square. All right, so let's see. 
All right, so let's just close that position now and we'll do it with an exit. So the difference between a sell signal and an exit is that if you are taking both sides and you send a sell signal, it will exit the long position and then it'll wait for that long position to exit and then it'll enter short. And then similarly, the buy signal will do the reverse. If you have an open short position and you receive a buy signal, it'll exit the short position. It'll wait for that short position to be fully exited and that order to be filled. And then it'll send another order to, um, to enter long on the other side. So Sander says, friendly reminder that if you have auto submit disabled, you will need to approve the trade from the trade notifications page. That's right. So let me show you what that looks like just so we can see it again. I'm gonna disable auto submit. I'm gonna go back to the webhook. I'm gonna send an exit signal. The trade was created and let's go to the inbox here. So you see that the first one with auto submit, see how it says trade auto approved? If I go back to the notifications and look at this trade, it hasn't been approved yet and it hasn't been submitted to the broker. So you'll see that there's this approve and reject button. So say I didn't want to take this trade. You know, and Sanders says, I do this during choppy market time so I can review the trade first. So you could have your strategy all set up and you could turn off auto submit and then wait till you get the alert. And then you can go look at the trade set up and kind of look at what the market is doing and decide if you want to take that trade or not. So say I didn't want to take that trade, I could click the reject button and you'll see that the trade signal was rejected by myself. But say I changed my mind. Actually, I do want to take the trade. I can click retry. And now it's back into that state that it was in before. And I can click approve. And now that order was sent to the broker. And if I go back to that trader's post broker, you'll see that we've exited that position. And we made $14.55 testing these orders with Square.